Qigong, internal energy cultivation. It is the natural science of healthcare and energy management, which involves understanding natural patterns and repeated cycles, seeking and maintaining the body's changing internal energy systems. This builds up concentration, the will, it develops one's essence and cultivates one's mind, body and spirit. Well, one of the key ways to cultivate one's mind, body and spirit is to make sure that your immune system is ready for the defense uh, uh, against any attacks of colds, flus, yeah, right. mm -hmm. viruses, and even chronic non-communicable diseases, especially those. So we're going to be talking about that this morning with Q, and we're also going to talk about self-defense. Yeah. Doug? Yeah. How, how do the two go together? <laughs> Basically, Doug, self-defense, the body has an internal self-defense system, mm -hmm. and we have self-self-defense. The external self-defense systems are like marsh, martial arts. You have things like Xing Yi, Bagua, Yao Wing Chan, Tai Chi. Mm -hmm. And those are your immune system responses. It's like a pathogen um, comes in, a bacteria, a virus, proteins. And the body's response now is to produce things like um, antigens, right? Which is uh, this with, anti, um, with antibodies, it produces them. Now, the martial art techniques now, when some person attacks you, it's like a pathogen attacking mm -hmm. you. You with me? So the body has to respond in self-defense. Okay. My self-defense is you punch at my face, I'm going to block it, punch at my stomach, I'm going to block it. So the body responds, but the various pathogens are different. So the body has to produce different responses. So my body is, is like an army. My immune system produces an army to defend against the, the pathogens. You with me so, so far? So basically, the martial arts techniques are designed to protect your body immune system it produces the defense systems self-defense mm -hmm. and the immune system let's take a look we're going to be looking at self-defense the body has an immune system it fights antibodies and so forth things against the body we have all kind of systems everything works together now Self-defense is also outside. If someone wants to hurt you, I can consider that still an antibody. They're trying to hurt your body. So today we're going to look at some basic, basic rules for self-defense, defending your body against injury. One of the things we want to look at is the, the psychology of the attacker. That person probably have some issues. Bad childhood, the person wants to show that they're a tough guy, a tough girl, so they have some issues. They want to be looked up to amongst their friends or maybe they just want money. They want to rob, steal. And in this world that we live in now, crime has, has become more rampant and prevalent. So self-defense makes sense. So. From the body's immune system, defending against viruses and flus and keeping your body strong, you're going to take that concept and put it in a physical um, presentation. And we're going to look at things like distances, long distance, medium distance, and close distances. So you always want to build your immune system up, okay? So let's look at this. Let's look at something called distance awareness first. In the self-defense, you pretty much are going to have to defend yourself either from a long range, a medium range, or close range. Long range are things like guns and bow and arrows, or somebody pelting rocks and, and uh, sticks and objects at you. Long distance, medium and small. See what Danny will help me out here a bit? We're gonna look at long distance. So, long distance is primarily where the person has to take a step to hurt your body, and you also go back. So. Now, if I'm this far, he kicks, see? I have to know my distance. So it gives me plenty of time to see his body. So I do the same thing to him as well, okay? If I'm at this distance, and I, I have to step to him, why? I can't punch him. I can't kick him from this range, no matter what I do, see? I can't, I can't hit him, I can't hit him from this range. So I have to step in. See? So he sees that. So, basically, my foot must step here, it must step here, it must step 
over, but anything that allows me to reach him closer. That's long distance. Now, medium distance is where I'm closer. I still can't hit him with my hands, but my foot can kick. My foot can kick, my foot can kick, but my hands cannot hit, okay? And the next range is close range, see? I can kick, I can hit at this range, hands and foot, the most dangerous range. So in self-defense, you must be able to defend yourself at all ranges. So if I did a long range, he defends himself. Simple. If I am at medium range, I can't hit, but still, I go to kick. Close range, I strike. See? <laughs> and he was striking me, of course. <laughs> okay? So we have more ranges. And the first thing is self-defense. So, again, you don't want to go hurting people. Primarily, you want to not be hurt. So distance awareness is the first aspect of that. Also, you must look at conditions, okay? Example, if my foot is in St. Philip and his head is in St. Lucie, that's one part of the island. If my foot is extremely uh, one part of the island, and his head is on the other part, I'm not gonna use my foot to kick him in the head. I can, but if my hands are in Bridgetown, halfway point, it's easier to use my hands than to use a foot. Also, what we try not to do is to do things that um, is too difficult for the average person. An example, punch. I'm not gonna block, okay? step over his head like this, okay, hit him in his back and throw him down, okay? It's not too practical, okay? It's more practical for simplicity, okay? So you want things to be simple and easy. Even if you are 50 years old, you're 20, you're 30, you're 70, you want to be able to, able to defend yourself no matter what age it is before having to do flips and somersaults. Punch again, so basically, this, this one here, I want to be able to do a simple technique. One motion and go through and that, that's it. I punch at him, he does the same thing. Here, straight through. Something sim simple. If you do Tai Chi or the Wing Chun, you have things like sticking hands that blocks and continues. But what we're showing you are basic, basic principles. Example again, uh, if, I, if I choke him, this hand or this hand, right? Simple. Release. Simple. Example, he's not going to choke. You know, he's going to go like this and do too many things. Because first of all, I'm thinking of, ah, I can't breathe. Ah, help me. Murder, murder, whatever it is. Huh? Help me somebody. Huh? So my first instinct is not, is not to do too many things. Simple, like this. End the game, that's it. Release is done. So, thank, thank you. Before you act, there's always a thought. Whether that thought is subconscious or conscious, is always a thought because actions are predicated by thoughts. You cannot be sad unless you have a sad thought. You cannot be angry unless there's an angry thought. And thoughts can be pictorial which means there is, a, there is a picture, a memory of something that, that, that is angry and then the emotions come about and then the actions come about. So you can guard your actions by guarding your thoughts and your emotions and that is also self-defense. I, I want to know question, Silly. Um, you know, quite often when we get the cold is when we, we, we run for all, all the vitamins, you know. <laughs> Correct. Um, <laughs> is, 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 there, is there a regime that, that, that we, can, we can go through as, as, as it relates to Tai Chi and Qigong that helps us 
during the problem? Yes, first, dealing with it before it happens is mm -hmm. always, it's always the best. The, yeah. the best. Mm -hmm. When you have it, mm -hmm. one of the best things you can do is learn to relax. Mm -hmm. As you learn, because 80% of diseases is caused by stress. And if you have a virus, a flu, and you, whatever it is, the stress of it is gonna make it worse. So the best thing you can do is learn to relax. Also, you can also, at that time, try to build your immune system up to defend against it. It's almost as if there's a group of guys that comes in and attacks you, and you're by this door, okay? And they're coming in, so you need to get some reinforcements now. You're, you're with me to defend against them. Mm -hmm. So now you need to get the reinforcement. You need to get the vitamin C. You need to get the kiwi. You need to get the alfalfa. You need to get all these different kind of herbs and stuff to defend against the echinacea, mm -hmm. those kind of things. Mm -hmm. But the Tai Chi as well, mm -hmm. re reducing the stress and tension. Definitely on using your mind, your visualization, See yourself to healing because memory and the visualization of it is very important using the mind's eye. So using the mind's eye, we also need to look as well. Um, Kimberly and I were talking about, about self-defense, not just physical self-defense or mental, dealing with mental attacks but spiritual. We need to also look at how do we defend against um, spiritual attacks? And so we, we say people go to church, to go to the masjid, the mosque, the temples, and mm -hmm. so forth. Some people stay at home and they meditate. But we don't think sometimes of how do we defend against what people call Satan or mm -hmm. Satan or Set or whatever negative terms, but how do we defend against those, not negative thoughts, but the negative forces within our lives as well? And we also need a defense against that, huh? It's true. In fact, um, this is where we, we put the question out there. How do we cope with some of the negative influences? Because it is negative energy. Yes. And as spiritual beings, how do we cope yeah. with the negative energies that sometimes are given off towards us? I'm glad you said that. We don't realize that we're spiritual beings having a physical experience on the physical plane. Mm -hmm. Beautifully and well, well said. Mm. So, we, we need to be on guard. Yeah, exactly, we need to be on guard all of the time. And, but then how, how can we determine when, when all of these elements are impacting on us negatively? Is, is there a particular sign? Do we feel lethargic? I mean... Yes, there's times, there, there's things like fatigue. Like we were talking before about things like depression as well. Mm -hmm. And when someone is at a point where they don't feel that, that, that they don't have the coping skills themselves mm -hmm. or that people around them don't assist them in coping. They're liable to kill themselves. They're liable to do a lot of things. But we need to look at the coping skills. Mm -hmm. So what about um, stress, which is self-induced? How, how, how can you avoid stressing yourself out? Okay. One of the things that you can do is look at your belief system. Most of us stress ourselves out by our belief systems. Mm -hmm. It must be this way, it does this way. And so, and sometimes because our belief systems, we don't believe in things like meditation. And meditation has been, pres has been prescribed for thousands of years. So your belief system can keep you from things that can help you. It is time now for the words of wisdom. In the morality of the mind, to achieve any objective, one must have willpower, endurance, perseverance, patience, and courage. Remember, the race doesn't always go to that person who is the swiftest. It goes to he or she who endures to the end and beyond. And that is where we wrap up this morning. Of course, it's been quite a bit of a journey uh, to start off the Monday. We try to, to, to take this roller coaster ride and bring it down to a certain level but it's, at it's this been hour. A, it's been a good journey. And now, yeah. and now we, we have it behind us. We're all relaxed. And we can look forward to what's to come tomorrow.